in love. And abide with him for grace and mercy is to his saints. Grace and mercy is to his saints. But you get grace and mercy again through what? Because this faith is telling you what I said from the beginning. Faith is what? Obedience. Obedience. See this, Paul is saying it. Paul is saying all this right there in verse two. Whom we have access by obedience unto this grace. This, this is why it's so important. And you know, it's almost like beating a dead horse because most people still see it another way. Watch this, how he goes through here. And we look at this. And it tells you in Romans chapter one, verse five. It says, and he declared to be the son of God with the power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead. But watch this clear here. Watch how clear this is. <clears throat> Verse 5. By whom we have received grace. Same thing. Grace. How? In apostleship, this message for obedience. He said this in the first chapter. Fifth verse. To the faith among all nations for his name. This is your key right here. Obedience to the faith. That's why I said you can remove faith. Put obedience there. This is why we have problems because much, many of us have a problem with that very word I got highlighted. With obedience. We want to do it their way. You got, you got, you got, you got women who, who preaches out there. You got some of them made really, really big. And doing everything contrary to what God said. Everything contrary. You have men out there teaching. Everything contrary to that very word right there. Everything. And this is the problem we have today. Because the only way you're going to receive grace and I told you, don't worry about grace. If you have faith, grace is going to follow. So don't worry about grace. You worry about your faith. You build up your faith and stop and get your mind off of grace. So if you understand that, now you can receive things from God because as God shows you and teach you through his, through his messengers, you can understand what's going on to where you can correct it. And as you correct it through the obedience of what you are hearing, this comes automatically. Because if you do, okay, let's look at it this way. If the most I got, you didn't know something, what, was, what you were doing was wrong. Let's just take that. You didn't know what you were doing was wrong. But now you find out through one of his messengers, you was wrong. And you see the precepts of what you were doing wrong. You see it. Now, <clears throat> you change from what you're doing. You remember it and you know not to do that anymore. So you purge that out of your life. How can God not do this for you? How can, how can he not give you grace? he cannot do that it's impossible if you didn't know something and now you know it's still sin and you, you'll be punished for sin however he has to give you grace he has to give you grace because you have faith in what he said is true
it's in a way where God gives you the upper hand every time. But it's through our stick neck and our disobedience where we end up on the bottom of the hill. Meaning this, why I said God giving us the upper hand. We sin against God, which by right, we should all be there. By right. I'm going to show you this right here. We'll go to Malachi, and this is not part of the precept, so don't try to write this down, or you're not going to see me even bring it up. But I just want to show you what, what happens here. <clears throat>